And many times the devil will hinder a person that want to be saved and that God wants to save because they can't figure out how they can get from where they're at to God. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage this morning that God is able to take a mess, something that's out of order. All right. Come on. And to perform a miracle. My God. Put it perfectly in order. Amen. God is able to take something, my God, that's broken down and build it up. God is able to take somebody, my God, that is downcasting or somebody that's going through all type of things in life and work out every single detail of everything that they're going through. Amen. So the Apostle Paul gives his testimony and breaks down what God did for him. Mm-hmm. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. A miracle is an act or an event that does not follow the laws of nature, but is the result of a divine source, that which man cannot duplicate. If man can accomplish it, then it's not a miracle. My, my, my. Let me say that again. If man can accomplish it, then it's not a miracle. We gave some examples earlier about flight. Airplane is tremendous. Flying an airplane, but through human uh, ingenuity and aerodynamics, they can create an engine that can get the wings up and they can fly. It's, it, it's a tremendous feat, but it's not a miracle because man can accomplish it. A boat on top of the water that it doesn't go down, goes across the water. That's powerful, but it's not a miracle. We even expressed about the ability of Michael Jordan to fly by God through the air and slam dunk a basketball. That's powerful, but that's not a miracle. He has the leg muscles and the power, the big hands and the height to do that, which he did. I expressed earlier, if you were to go and fly through the air, my mind, that might be a miracle. Amen. You don't got the hops that Michael Jordan got, amen. But with salvation, and we're going to break this down this morning, the power of God to create, my God, take a mess and create a miracle. All right, let's look into this. First Timothy chapter 12, chapter 1, verse 12. Read, brother. And I thank Jesus Christ, uh-huh. my Lord, my Lord, who has enabled me. Yes. For that he counted me faithful. Yes. Putting me into the ministry. Paul said, "If God will be faithful, put me into the ministry." Who was before a blasphemy? Who was before a blasphemy? They didn't to that Christ speaking against Christ, blasphemy against truth, blasphemy. Jesus, nobody. He was just a man. He was my Lord speaking against truth, blasphemy. Don't take on blasphemy. Be careful, don't blaspheme. Here he was a blasphemer. Read. Who was before a blasphemy? Yes. And a persecutor. Yes. And an injurious. Yes. But. Yes. I obtained mercy. My Lord. Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. I didn't realize what I was doing. Read. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. My, my. Faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. I want to read. This is a faithful saint and worthy of all acceptation. Yes. That Christ Jesus. Yes. Came into the world to uh, save sinners. My Lord. Of whom I am chief. Yes. How be it? But this cause, I obtained mercy. Yes. That in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. To encourage others, no matter how far you go, there's hope. Come on and read. Now to the King eternal. Yes. Immortal. My Lord. Invisible. The only wise God. Only he could do that. The honor and glory. Nobody could have done what I needed. Nobody could have done that. Only he could have done that. I was messed up, my God. Bound up. Only he could have done what I needed to be done. And he said in this text of sinners whom I am chief, he wasn't talking about his current status. This is the same Paul that said over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. And we know that Christ, amen, in 1 Peter 2, 21, is if we even here unto where ye call it, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. The next verse said, who did no sin. So we know that the apostle Paul was following Christ. He told them, y'all follow me. He wasn't talking about I'm the worst sinner, chief, this, that, the other. No, no, no. He was talking about the miracle. I was before a blasphemer. Nobody was like me. You might have done, you might have did this wrong, but I was going against the Christians. I was ch- getting letters to go and kill them and persecute them. I was speaking at their trials, condemning them. That was who I was. I'm the chief. And the reason why he said that was Christ showing a pattern that no matter what you've done, there's hope. 
You get me? He's showing early on in the Christian faith, amen, that God is a long-suffering God. Amen. God is a merciful God. And Paul said he used me as an example who was the worst of the worst of the worst. I was cheap when nobody worse than I am. Amen. But a miracle took place. Amen. One day I was on a roll call in Damascus. All right. Amen. I had asked the high priest for letters. And I said, let me go to, I heard down in Damascus they having a prayer service. There's some church of God folk down there having church. Let me go down there and persecute them. But on my way down to, I was a mess. I would speak at their court cases. I would speak against them. One day there was a man named Stephen. Amen. He was a righteous man. I consented unto his death. I said he didn't kill him. I was persecuting the saints. I would hurt them and injure them. I would speak against them. But one day on the road to the Damascus, a light shone from heaven, brighter than the noonday sun. And that light, Jesus spoke through it. He said, Paul, Paul, why, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? He said, who is this? Is this a, a Buddha? Who is this? Confucius? Who is this? Uh, uh, some pagan God? Who is this, my God? He said, I'm not going to leave you confused. It's Jesus. My God, it's Jesus, amen. He said, I know this didn't come from man. I know this has got to be God. Who are you? How do I get to you? He said, this is Jesus, amen. Whom thou persecutest, amen. So Paul surrendered his life. And God raised him up. Took him from a mess to a miracle. Let me just say this for a moment. Because sometimes individuals, and I want to get to this point, my God, and pray with me, saints. But sometimes individuals will even be religious. But they're a mess. Amen. Out of order. They go to church on Sunday and they come up in a choir and they'll sing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved the rest like me. But by about later on that evening,
Paul was saying here that I thought I was doing, I, 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 was, I, started, I grew up in this. I sat at the feet of Gamaliel. I, 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 I grew up in this as a child. My grandfather was in this faith, and I did it, and I did what they did. But I'm just forgetting my grandfather. Forget all of them. Something ain't right. I need some help. I need somebody that can straighten my life out. But how can I read this and live it that night? It takes a miracle. We're going to preach on that this morning. Yes. Amen. You can't do it. But that's what the miracle is. See, yes. humanity wants to take the miracle out of the power of salvation. Yes. They want to take the glory from God. How can a person be bound up in sin? Come to an altar of prayer. Get saved. Walk in the newness of life. Be a changed person. That took a miracle. You can't deny that. My no God, man can my do God, that. My you can God. go through all the catechism. You can go through all the classes you want to go through. But only God can change your heart. Only God, only God can deliver your soul. God. Only God can break every yoke. Only God can deliver from every spirit, my God. Yeah. People look at you and they say, man, it's a miracle. He not, I mean, what happened to her? I know how she used to be. See, religion, humanity can accomplish that. That's putting uh, uh, religious practices on top of sin. But sin is still there. That man can do that. You, you, the, the, the Muslims are doing it. Yeah. They, they go every 6 o'clock in the morning. They say, the Hindus are doing it. They meditate three times. Some go downtown to a little booth. They sit there. Um, they go, the man be on the other side with a little thing there. And they go and say, yes, uh, Father, sir, uh, I, I cheated on my wife last night. And I, um, I watched pornography. And I did this and the other. It's okay. Got you. Okay. Go say three Hail Marys to our fathers. Lord be with you. Thank you. Next one. Yes, sir. Um, I cheated on my tap. So, God has better, brother. humanity God has better. ain't no better than that. Every week you've been doing it since you was a little girl, coming down here every week. And guess what? There's a therapy that comes to that. If you ever confess anything, there's a therapy. It's, it, you do feel better. You're not saved. You're not delivered. But they, they, so you can feel. Well, I feel so good when I left. Or I go to church, pray, 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 oh yeah, pray, pray. It's a it feels good to go. But the condemnation, after I leave though, how do I get the change that takes place? Amen, that, 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 that there's an experience that you can follow me around at midnight. Walk, take my phone, go all through it. There ain't no sin, no one God. No, only a miracle can do that. So we're going to look into how does this take place? Go over to Psalms. David broke it down. Psalms chapter 40. From a mess to a miracle. Psalms chapter 40. We're going to break this down. Lord, make it clear. You hear yourself. From a mess to a miracle. Many are in need of a miracle. And I believe that God has it for you this morning. If you're in religion, if you're going to church, but that experience is just not there. This morning, breakthrough. This morning, breakthrough time. Breakthrough time. If you're in sin and you need a miracle, Say, my life, you don't even know. I'm dealing with so much right now. You don't know. You don't know. I know. I may not know every detail, but I know what you need. I may not know all you're going through, but I got the solution now. Amen. It's right here in the Word of God. Psalm chapter 40. David broke it down. Let's look into it. Come on and read. I waited patiently for the Lord. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. You read the verse before in the last chapter. Amen. He talks about, amen, how he got before God and he cried out before God and he was guilty, amen. He said, spare me, Lord, spare me that I go no more out and forward. Fro, Lord, I need help. He was broken and he was contrite. And that's what you got to do to get saved. You can come to an altar this morning and I promise you God can do a work in your life. God can put all the pieces back together. But it's not about joining church. You got to meet the conditions, amen. It don't cost no money, but amen, you got to be broken and contrite. You got to have godly sorrow. David said, Hear, he said, Spare me, O God. He said, Hear my cry, O Lord. Give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace for my tears. I'm a stranger with thee. I'm separated. He owned it. He owned it. He, then he cried out before God and then he waited. And he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. I'm seeing if God going to respond. Lord, I was sincere. Lord, I'm for real. Lord, I'm done. I'm done. I remember the day I got saved. Came up to an altar. Never been saved before. And I just said, no, hold on. Crying out before God. Lord, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Matter of fact, when I was back on the wall, the Bible says it talks about counting the cost. Yeah. That's why you don't ever force nobody. You cannot force nobody to get saved. 
they got to count the cost. You got to count the everything wrong, you got to give up. Everything, that's why you, they say when you're young, before you get involved in all that stuff. Amen. That's why I remember now that creator in the days of thy youth. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, hold on. Dealing with this, dealing with that. What about this? What about that? I'm done. I'm done. What about this? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I just want to be saved. I want to be saved. I'm tired of just being out here in the world. I'm tired of this. I want to be saved. I'm done. It don't matter. I'm done. What about that? I'm done. What about, I'm done. What about I'm done. And after I thought about myself, oh, ain't no more I'm done. I'm going to get saved. I'm, I, I've encountered it. Ain't no more. Ain't, whatever else is it, I'm done. I'm finished with it. I'm done. It, it, it's over with. It's over. Whatever I got to give up, I'm giving it up. I'm, give, I'm, I'm finished with it. I'm done. I, I understood you can't serve two masters. I couldn't come halfway. I couldn't come up. That's why a lot of people never get their breakthrough. They try to come to God but yet hold on to some stuff that they know they shouldn't be holding on to. So then they'll have religion but they don't have salvation. You got to let go and let God. David said, I waited patiently after I let it all go. So here he said, and he inclined unto me. And that's what he'll do to you this morning. Come on and read, brother. And he inclined unto me uh -huh. and heard my cry. My Lord. He brought me up also yes. out of a horrible pit. When you hear your cry, something happens. The first miracle that takes place. A miracle because of where he will bring you from. Number one, it's a miracle because of where he will bring you from. It said he brought me about also out of a horrible pit. Deep down in sin. Miracle. Bound up. Over in Ephesians, he said, Ephesians 2 1, it said, You have to quicken who are dead. And trespasses and sin. In times past, horrible pit. Doing whatever the devil say do. Lying and stealing. Yes. Open Corinthians, it broke down. It said, go over to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 9. You'll come right back to that text. 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 9. God has a miracle. It's a miracle because of where he will bring you from. I don't care what you're bound by. I don't care what habits you may have. It's a miracle because of where he'll bring you from. God has the power this morning. God has the power. This power is in this house this morning. It doesn't matter what you involved with. Amen. How long you've been doing it? First Corinthians six verse nine. Read, brother. Know ye not? Know ye not? That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the God. The Apostle Paul was the church of God preacher. He wasn't playing no games. He said heaven and hell is too serious. See, that's why, man. Don't mess with false religion. I'm gonna tell you the worst thing about false religion. False religion. It's not that only that it don't give you full salvation that you can experience the blessing of life and deliverance. False religion will render you in the judgment unprepared. Amen. 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 It's true. All the rest of I just said, all, all false religions, what they do in a nutshell is to bring people, and that's the devil's whole objective. To bring people to this soon clouds gonna split. And here they go, standing before God. To see. God said, on that great day, the book shall be open. And another book. Everything you do, God see it. God see it. God and it's been written down in the book. The word of God, the books, the books is gonna judge us, and another book, your life. And God's gonna. That's why the Apostle Paul said here, know ye not, the unrighteous. Well, I got saved when I was two. I got baptized. I'm going to spring the water. You weren't living right. You was doing this. That. You weren't living right. This ain't about this church or that church or this preacher or that. Forget all that. Ain't no preacher going to stand with you on a judgment day. You got to have You got to have an experience with God that produces you an experience that you can live right on earth. That's the truth does. That's the truth in a nutshell. It produces an experience in your life. It's not about theology. You can argue your point. Is it the Trinity or is it God, Jesus only? Is it speaking in tongues or is it uh, uh, it's tongues and language? Is it baptism three times or one? Okay, you can argue all that stuff and make the scripture fit whatever you wanted to. But at the end of all your argument, will what you are presenting produce a life that will have me ready to split the cloud? If God come back at noon, at 12 o'clock at night, if he come back while I'm sleeping or in the morning, my God. Will it produce in you an experience? And that's what he said right there. Come on, read, Brother Frank. No, you not. Come on. That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Not going to do it. Come on, read, brother. 
Be not deceived. He said, don't let nobody deceive you. Say what you want. I love your blood and your granddad. But don't let them deceive you, though. Right. Appreciate all you want. Right. Oh, that's right. Don't you let nobody deceive you. Mm -hmm. No, you no, no, you good because uh, you shook the preacher's head. I understand that, but why not living right? I listened to everything you said do. I went up to the altar, I shook three times, turned all the way around, shook your hand and gave you an offer. Why after all of that, I ain't living right, though? When I'm get the power down in my soul, though? Why when temptations come, I find myself bowing to them every single day? Why do I when, when can I get the power? To do what's right. He said, don't let nobody deceive you. Come on, read, brother. Be not deceived. Yes. Neither fornicators. Come on. No idolaters. It's amazing to me that people think that they can fornicate. You ain't married to them. And y'all ain't even married. Y'all having sex. Y'all doing this and the other. And y'all got some preacher deceiving. You got you up in a choir. And you actually think you saved. My God. What Bible are you reading? What? Go straight to him. Take the word of God and say, you telling me I'm saved. You agree got me doing this and the other. But the Bible said right there, you know I live with my boyfriend. I can't go to no heaven doing this. Why are you going to Why are you failing me? That's why the Bible says they're dumb dogs. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about like a, a dog is a per, it, it, the, the dog warns you. Like if, if a thief is coming, a dumb is not talking about the like ignorant dummies that they're not making sign. Dumb. So here it says, uh, uh, the thief is coming, and the dog is a dumb dog. It, they're breaking, stealing your house, taking your computer, taking your car, and your dog is sitting there like this. <laughs> and your watchdog <laughs> is not expressing to you and got you prepared. <laughs> the thief is here. Hun, 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 hun. Come on, brother. Here I am, not living right. Here I am, I'm not doing this at the other. Uh, in the bottom of the Jesus. Okay, I think you're doing all that. Talk to me about my soul. Hey! Right. Look at you. Yeah. I need something done to my soul. Yeah. Give me some power. Yeah, right. If I'm doing wrong, cry out. Tell me it's wrong. Warn me now. Warn me now. Yeah. My God, my God. Moses in the Bible, preach it, brother. Preach it, brother. Be not deceived. Yes. Neither fornicators. Yes. Nor idolaters. My Lord. Nor adulterers. My mind. Nor effeminate. Come on, read. Nor abusers of, of themselves with mankind. Come on. Nor thieves. You, you got a mustache talking about you had a boyfriend. Yeah. Come on. This is the Bible. You're in the Bible, brother. Well, no, what we do, we do the, no, no, you're abusing you. Whatever y'all do, you're abusing yourself. Yeah, well, your body wasn't made for that. You're doing what's wrong. Oh, that ain't right. The word of God says this, my God. In feminine, it didn't even step a step a step further than that. Don't even act like it. That's right. What in the world's wrong with y'all? How much money you got? Don't put no pumps on your son. Don't put no dress on your son. That's right. What's wrong with you? And you got this world that's just eating. Oh, oh, oh just love. No, no, no. The Bible said in feminine. That way he was born a man. He was born a male child, my God. Putting fingernails on your little boy. That's food. Did somebody need to cry out against that? All these dumb dogs around here. Somebody need to bark loud. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. We were better than that. The world was better than that. Come on. Now we used to be like this. How did we get here, my God? This is the word of God. So it ain't happening. You ain't doing it. Come on and read, brother. Thank God. He said, no, no, no. That's y'all church. Our church don't teach that. It's the Bible. It's, Amen. Bible. it's the Bible. The Bible said that. You can't do that, my God. Well, I don't believe that. It ain't about what you believe. It's the word of God. This is what's going to judge us in the end. Come on and read, brother. Nor thieves. Yes. Nor covetous. Can't be stealing stuff. Nor drunkards. Come on. Nor revilers. Drunkards, my God. This is talking about those that abuse their body. You can't be putting foreign stuff in your body like that, nothing. Come on, read. Come on, man. Well, it's from the earth. Opioids is from the earth. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Dirt's from the earth. Right. If it ain't good for your body, it ain't good for your body. If it's going to have a deleterious effect on you, it'll make me feel good. I don't care what it makes you feel. Destroying brain cells and everything else. 
Come on, come on, read, brother. Nor revilers. Yeah. Nor extortioners. Yes. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Not gonna happen. Read. And but, so but, but, before you stick your chest out, and you wanna look down on some other folk, and be like, oh, she, she's sleeping around. Oh, she played a lot. Oh, I heard that he was over there looking up for the, oh, I heard that. Before you look down on somebody else, before you go trying to judge other folk, my God, before you go trying to tell them what they ain't doing, before you want to look down on them and say, oh, I, don't, I ain't talking to you. Now, we understand under COVID-19, don't be hugging on folk. But I'm talking about just the principle of, ah, get away from me. He said, hold on. What do you say, my friend, what the Bible say? As such were some of you. Not since the song that was up here singing, oh, praise the Lord, with her nice little breath, oh, praise yeah, she was she was dirty. She was dirty. Yeah, she was dirty. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not, 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 not for the so and so. Oh, he looks so dignified with his suit on. Not. Don't, 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 no, 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 no. He searched for some of you. Uh, he had wandering eyes. Do not. Oh, he loves his wife when he walks in. Oh, he's just such a dignified brother. No. But such were. 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 But such were. What? What? Why? Why? Why could it say definitively? Were. But such work, but such work. Amen. Why? Because a miracle took place. Amen. Because a miracle took place. How the world was bound with all these spirits, and the Bible able to say it worked. That was your past. That's the miracle. It's the miracle because of where He can bring you from. My God used to get high, not through an eight-step step program. Why don't you get high no more? You went through this? No, no. I went to an altar. I asked God to forgive me. I was broken in contract. Amen. It was gone. No, it just happened. Bro, I'm trying to tell you it works. No, it, it works. No, see, I don't get saved because I'm bound by I still get out of Don't worry about that. There's a miracle. Just let go. There's a miracle that can take place. That God is able. God is able to work. There's a miracle with your name on. There's a miracle with your name on this morning. So here, number one, he said that it's a miracle because of where he brings us from. Go back to our text real quick. Psalms chapter 40. It's also a miracle because of where he will bring you to. It's a miracle because of where he brought you from, where he will bring you from, no matter what you are bound by. My God. That's the word, Lord. It's a miracle because of where he will bring you to. Read, brother. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Uh-huh. Out of the miry clay. My Lord. And set my feet upon a rock. He did what? And set my feet upon a rock. That rock was Christ. When you get saved, amen, he... You stand on Christ, that solid rock. It's a miracle because of where he will bring you to. That rock is Christ. That rock is salvation. He'll bring you from the bondage of sin. Bring you to the power of salvation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, don't go there. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. New creature means new creation. It's a miracle because of where he'll bring you to. A new mind, new desires. I used to say, I'm not going to get saved, man. I don't feel like going to church all the time. I didn't know that my mind would be shifted, that I can't wait to get to church. My Lord, I can't wait till all this stuff is over so we can go back to normal, amen. Amen. It's a miracle that your mind, the stuff that you used to do, you don't want to do it no more. People come and say, man, y'all saved. Y'all can't do this. Y'all can't go to the, y'all can't do this. Y'all can't go to the strip. Y'all can't do this. Y'all can't, y'all saved, bro. Y'all can't, no, 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 you understand. I don't want to do that. I can do what I want to do. Hey man, I don't want. Hold on. You, you still like doing that? I know where the miracle took place. Amen. It changed my mind. Amen. It changed my heart. It changed my. I, I used to think that when you get saved, you have to hold yourself at, in the nighttime. Oh, I can't do this because I'm playing now. Friends will call you, hey, bro, we're going to Canada. We're going up here. We're going to the cook. And I would have to sit there. I'm like, man, no, we got a Bible set at night. I can't. I didn't understand. My, my, my. My mind changed. How in the world am I a miracle? My the desire changed, my God. It's not that I can't do, I don't want to do. So God has a miracle. It's a miracle because of where he'll bring you to. Also it said in that verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, when any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It said all things are of God. It's a miracle because of where he'll bring you to. Hold on. Where all things are of God, not some. I'm not halfway in this thing. I don't got one foot still in dirt. Follow me around. No, that's you got. 
give you tight. The children of Israel was in Egypt. Pharaoh said, y'all can go. Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, he told, man, go up to Moses. Get those children of Israel back in here. Well, they went. God said, keep going. They said, hold on, God, how can we keep going? There's a sea in front of us, a mountain range on the left, the desert on the right. Well, we're going to be die, die, die. What? He said, I got you. Don't panic. Come on. Don't panic. Come See, on. you never need to panic when God is on your side. Yeah. You never need to panic. He'll make a way out of nowhere. Yeah. You may not see it, but just keep believing. Yeah. Keep believing and keep listening to my God. Yeah. You don't see how no, how I get out of there. I think God gets excited <laughs> when you get into one of those things. How am I going to get out of that guy's like, Whoa. Child, they in one of those situations. How am I gonna get out of this one? Ooh, angel, time to show up and show out. Amen. No, no Moses. Amen. Part, take your, take your map. Part to walk. Hold on. Water stood up. They walked through. Now I don't know how in the world. See, God does some stuff and He does multiple things at one time. He He parted the waters. Then He had the water stay, and they they had to stay and. Until all the children of Israel got out. But then he had to time it. See, God got time it. He had to time it. So when Pharaoh started to come in. Hold on, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up for a minute. I'm going to get to that. Let me back When they went through, whenever, you know the laws, whenever moisture, water, is over land for any period of time, that land is muddy and mucky. And then you ever went outside the rain and look a little puddle in your yard or whatever, get a little spot? Okay, once that water even removes itself or go try to step there, it's mud, you get stuck and you just it said they went through on dry. So I gotta dry the ground so they can go through quickly. And then God knows all the details of what. How could you not want to serve a God right now? Right? Hallelujah. Then, soon as they last little old lady or little old man, the last one that barely was walking, soon as the last one, the last saint, my God, got up on up, out, walked up out the Red Sea. God looked and said, "Okay, she's in." And Pharaoh and his army at that time, they were probably pretty close to him. They probably almost caught him. They probably had their chariots. They was right there. I got and poof. Oh the waters covered them. And it didn't say that 10 of them made it through. In Psalms 106, 9, verse 2, 11, it said the waters covered their enemies. Not one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Glory to Dios. Egypt represents sin. Amen. Pharaoh and his army represents spirits that keep us bound. How in the world could I come through the Red Sea, the blood of Jesus? How could I come through the Red Sea and not one spirit? You don't know all that Brother Marshall was dealing with or Brother Frank was dealing with. You don't all know all the spirits that Maria was dealing with. But how God knew, and not a single spirit, that's a miracle. 